pray that uh, things that we are about to ask for will be accepted in your heart and delivered to us, uh, Father, in the way that you know it should be. We ask you to bless this audience, bless those that still may be arriving at this to come to this prayer and praise service, God, that we will honor your name through the reading of scriptures, the songs, and the message of encouragement. Lord, we hope and pray that uh, things will be done decent and in order. We pray, Lord, uh, that Brother Jefferson's heart will be comforted to know, Lord, that uh, you are with him and he will prepare the doctor's minds to be receptive of whatever help they will need and recall from you to do the best service that is humanly possible. And with your intervention, Lord, we know that this will be the final step needed in order for him to have a good quality of life. Lord, we know when we ask you things, we don't know what all going to be needed when we say we want a person to be in great shape as they were before. So you know, Father, and that's why we will wait patiently as you make the adjustments in the physical life. Father, we ask you to Help us, Lord, to continue to love one another and serve each other in a way that you have said is necessary. We also pray for anyone else, Lord, who may be ill at this time that we know not of, that we will be able to uh, assist them in any way, and that you will be able to help them in every way, Lord. And this is our hope. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Trevina Butcher, and the Reba, the loss of our aunt. We ask you to strengthen her, Lord. And Encourage her, Lord, to continue on and persevere. We know, Father, that she worked diligently to try and rescue this particular song. We pray that you remember her, Lord, that in her hour she stands before you for the great work and service she has done in honor of you, and that she bears the seal of the Holy Spirit in her heart. Father, we ask you to bless the families that if they will be able to regroup after having lost a loved one so precious that they will be able to. Remember also some of the words that you're being said and turn to you for salvation. Father, we ask all these blessings in your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh, in righteous name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, if you uh, have your Bibles, we're going to go to uh, the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms. And while we turn to the book of Psalms, let us look at Psalm number 26. Psalms 26 division. We will look at a uh, all those verses start with verse 1 judge me O Lord for I have walked in mine integrity I have trusted also in the Lord therefore I shall not slide examine me O Lord and prove me try my reins and my heart for the loving kindness is before mine eyes and I have walked in thy truth I have not sat with vain persons neither will I go in with dissemblers I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord. And I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving, and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house, and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place, in the congregations will I bless the Lord. Amen. If you have your hymn books, I'll turn to 248. Uh, I know that my Redeemer lives. 248. 
And we know that uh, a footnote here says Job 19.25. These are the statements of the individual speaking in Job. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And we do too. And we will not sing praises and honor unto his holy and righteous name. If we sing all four verses, 248. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He wills that I should wholly be in word and thought indeed. Then I his holy face may see when from this earth life free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that unto sinful men is saving grace is nigh. I know that he will come again to take me home on high. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that over yonder stands a place prepared for me. A home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. Let's go to our Heavenly Father and a specific prayer unto God. Father God, at this time we come before you asking mercy and grace that we may approach with humble and contrite hearts. Father, we pray at this time for all the churches of Christ throughout this world. Dear Lord, help each and every individual congregation to remember it is you and you alone that offered up your precious son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, Father, you already knew what to say and what we should say. Dear God, we ask that our brethren that have decided that the other side of the fence looks better and more successful and they have tried to bring the nonsense of those that are lost into the church we ask that you forgive them help them to wake up Lord help that the letters that are written in Revelation will cause them to understand Lord that you are serious about removing the spiritual power Father we pray for those who are walking upright that they be commended and strengthened Father as was Smyrna and Philadelphia. We pray, Lord, that those works that walk upright will not be weary and well doing and will continue through meetings, through services, through all the work that is done behind the scenes, nurture and admonish the souls of men, especially the saints. Father, we say a special blessing upon Wilson Road that we will continue, Lord, to walk upright before you, that we will. Honor your name and glorify your name forever. Father God, we pray that we will continue to serve one another in a way that we will develop according to your will and your plan and in your time. 
Dear Lord, we pray that our walk will not cause any to stumble and bypass the truth that Jesus left behind. Master, we ask you to help us to remember that it is by our teaching and example that if we love one another, that if the world should see us, then they will know that we are your disciples indeed. And Father, when we enter that day, we will be more than enough to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. When we have been faithful of a few things, and at that time you will make us a rule over many. And Father, that will be more than enough for us. This is what we strive for, and we ask that each soul be given this opportunity, especially those that are the household of faith, Lord, that have continued to walk upright, that we will have that blessing forever in our heart and not let anything take it away. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. <clears throat> I was about to say, I almost say good morning, but I caught myself. <laughs> That's all right, bro. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. And welcome to the Church of Christ. Yes. Uh, would you please turn your, your uh, Bibles to uh, Old Testament of Psalms? Uh, let's see. We don't do that. Okay, we can turn it to Psalms chapter. Uh, 113, Psalms 113. Again, that is Psalms 113. Praise ye the Lord, praise O ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens, who is likened to the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunt hill. Then he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Would you all please turn your, your hymn books. My favorite song in this book. Our God, he is alive. Yes. Page 668. Again, that is page 668, Our God, He is Alive. Yes. There is beyond the ether blue A God concealed from human sight He tinted the skies with heavenly hue And framed the world with His great mind There is a God, He is alive in him we live and we survive. From dust our God, created man, he is our God. The greed I am, there was a long, long time ago, a God who Voice of prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, and if we live, and we survive. From dust our God, created man. He is our God, the great I am. Suck here is life from mortal mind. 
God holds the germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. There is a God. He is alive. In him we live. And we survive. From the side God created man, he is our God, the great I am, our God who sat upon a tree, a life was willing there to give, that he from sin might set men free. And evermore with him could live. There is a God. He is alive. In him we live. And we survive. From dust our God. Created man. He is our God. Thank you, beloved Father. Thank you for letting us gather here this evening, Lord, to worship amongst each other and share another portion of that word, Lord. Lord, we come with you with, un with bending knees, Lord, thanking you for the gracious and the time you have given us, Lord, this until this day. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to watch over the sick and the shut-in, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to heal their bodies. And we just ask you, Lord, to heal their minds, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to give them strength to their bones. We just ask you, Lord, to give them strength in their minds. But Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to give us strength that we need, our yes. daily bread that we go through, through these trials and tribulations that we go through on this earth, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, thanking you at this time for letting us be here this evening, yes. for all the saints to be here. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to watch over those who are on this way at this time through these very dangerous highways and byways, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to give us the need to share the gospel and to spread your word to those who really wants to to be here, Lord. We Lord, we know we only got <clears throat> we just ask you, Lord, to, to give us the need that we need. Yes. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, at this time, to watch over those who have bereaved this time, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to give them strength that they need, Lord. Yes. Lord, we know we all have to go one day, Lord, but we know when it's our time, it's our time. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to give us these days on, on this earth, Lord, to, to talk to people, yes. to give them the, the insight of what your home should be when we leave this earth. Yes. But Lord, at this time, we just ask you, Lord, to heal our pains and our sufferings yes. through any trial and tribulation that we're going through at this time, Lord. Yes. Marriage through the pain of bereavement and the pain of income and the pain of anything that we're going through. But Lord, we know that you got our back on any situation that we're going through, Lord. In Jesus' name we do all pray. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. 
Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently, O oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes or forsake me not utterly. Amen. Amen. Turn your hymn books to hymn number two. We're marching to Zion. <laughs> Once again, hymn number two. You have it. Let us sing. Come we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord. And the surround the throne, and the surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King. Speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. Cause we're marching to Zion, the beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The hill of Zion is a thousand sacred trees. Before we reach the heavenly field, before we reach the heavenly field, or oh, walk the golden streets, or oh, walk the golden streets, oh, we're marching to Zion, the beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground unto fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. Cause we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Let us uh, go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again we come to you. Thank you so much, Father, for this day. All your blessings, Father, that you granted us, Father, that are uh, brought us to this point. Well, uh, we want to just continue to ask and pray for that you uh, uh, watch over uh, the children here at our congregation uh, as they continue to navigate uh, through this life, Father, and navigate through their lives at school, uh, all the many uh, 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 stimuli Father, they encounter on a daily basis, Father. We ask and pray uh, that, that you would keep their minds, Father. Uh, that, that you would help them to, uh, uh, that, that you would get them ready to recall to all the wisdom and instruction that they've been given up until this point. Uh, I want to say a special prayer, Father, for uh, those that navigate social media, Father, uh, this invention that has been uh, put in the hands of our children. Uh, uh, like anything, there's always a good and bad, Father. We just have to pray that uh, you would help them to have wisdom as they deal with those things as well. Uh, continue to watch over. Um, uh, the lost as well, Father. Uh, those uh, in and out the kingdom, Father. Uh, those uh, without, Father, that they would hear the gospel, that they may be enlightened of truth, uh, that they may uh, 
gain repentance for uh, the return of his son, Father, for those in the kingdom, Father, who have uh, hearts that wax gross and turn cold. We ask to pray that uh, they remember their first love, the commitment that they made, and uh, that their souls be restored. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, saints. Good evening. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, there was many sacrifices done uh, by Levites uh, for Israel. And many times God smelt the sweet smelling savor uh, because the heart was involved also with the sacrifices that were given in the Old Covenant. And they obeyed God's commandment, you know, a peace offering by one of the tribes of Israel in Numbers mentions that they gave five rams, five goats, five lambs, and two oxen. That's the sacrifice that they gave uh, from the heart, uh, from the tribe, and, and God received it from each of the tribes at that time. And saints, uh, I know that God received our sacrifice that was given from the heart this evening, and we should continue to offer these sacrifices unto our Lord spiritually as we walk in this life to make heaven our home. And uh, tonight's lesson will be uh, a part what lack I yet? Uh, tonight's praise and worship. I just want to add this piece from Luke chapter. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 19. Uh, there's a young ruler who, in the New Testament, came to Christ. We want to look at exactly what he requested, how his life was, and compare and make parallels to our life, and see what lack we, if we lack anything. We know. Job was called perfect. He was a, called a perfect man before God. However, when a testing came, he uh, he slipped and allowed his mouth to sin in the conversation. And uh, God restored what he lacked at that time frame. And in Matthew chapter 19, we look at verse 16, where this man came running to Christ. Uh, Matthew 19, 16, the scripture reads, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And at this time, saints, in our lifetime, we're in the flesh. We haven't gone to paradise yet. We have eternal life. The scripture says we have, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we have eternal life now if we walk after the spirit. Now there's going to be a time when we're going to see the saints in person in paradise if we live faithful now this question that I may have eternal life was asked also uh, by someone else in a lawyer in Luke chapter 10 if we go quickly to Luke uh, chapter 10 we'll see that question that was asked by him however his intentions were different when he asked that question uh, he tempted him it says Luke 10 25 and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So he was tempting him, wanting to catch him in his words. Because uh, we read in the following verses, uh, it says, But he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And so these two mindsets, we know the rich man, I mean the rich young ruler had a good mindset. The lawyer had a, another different mindset. Uh, you may have a different mindset. From a Baptist that asked you this question, or a Catholic that asked you this question. However, these were Hebrews. Uh, they were supposed to be in agreement with everything that Christ has spoken. However, they disagreed on many points in this in this walk. And this is our goal, saints, is to make heaven our home. In verse 17, why callest thou me good? This is Matthew 19:17. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, in verse 18, in verse 17, verse 19, verse 18, he told him, do no, or what not to do. Verse 19, he told him what to do what to do verse 20 says that th 
The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And so all these things that he mentioned, we may have on our resume since our baptism and up, since our youth spiritually and up. And he asked the question, what lack I yet? The word lack, G5302, it's to be inferior. It means to be inferior, fall short of, to be deficient of, uh, destitute of, or to suffer need, or be in want of. That's what he's asking uh, Jesus Christ is, what, what am I destitute of? What am I inferior of? Uh, or what am I deficient in that I need? Because all these things have I done. And we may not be murderers. We might not commit adultery, steal, or bear us false witness. All of us here may honor our father and our mother and love our neighbors as ourselves. Some of these things we may need. We may need. We may not uh, love our neighbors. We may cuss them out. We may tell evil jokes, uh, dirty jokes at the workplace. Or we may have conversations that are ungodly outside the, the presence of the saints. And that's one, one thing that we have to uh, put on our on our resume to obey and obey righteously that may be what may be our lack you know in that area and so verse 21 says Jesus said to him if thou will be perfect go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me now Jesus met many men that had money now he didn't tell this commandment to everyone that he spoke to this was a specific thing that Jesus could see in his eye that was a problem with this specific person, this specific young man. And he said, come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, outside the church, you may tell them what you have to do. You have to, you have, you have to give up uh, uh, sins in this lifetime. You have to give up the church that you go with, and they may go away sorrowful. That may be their treasure, their, their possession that they have. They may store it up so much treasure in that faith, that false faith that is man-made, or they may store up so much into a, their grandparents or parents and what they've taught them, uh, and or they may store so much into a certain sin that they've involved themselves in, and they don't want to give that up. And so, verse 23, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Very I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Now, they were amazed at this saying. This is a saying that they were supposed to already know concerning uh, how rich people act, how rich people think. Not all rich act like this. However, they were supposed to recognize that mindset and not be amazed at it. They were supposed to be in agreement with it. But they said, who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said to them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Now, with when it says with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. It does mention in Timothy concerning how the rich should act, how they should think, not be high-minded, be willing to, to give. <laughs> However, uh, he doesn't, he says, but with God, all things are possible. It's not possible to enter in, however, with the sins that he mentioned, adultery, uh, murder, uh, bearing false witness. It's not possible to enter in with, with those sins. Uh, so when we look at the scriptures also, eternal life, we're not there yet. Uh, we're planning to get there. We're planning to get there. And to get there, we have to remove whatever we uh, is in the way that is a sin that Satan created. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, we look at another mindset here. This is uh, dealing with the Corinthian Church of Christ and a man who was sleeping with his father's wife. Verse 9, he says, I wrote unto you an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. So, the word fornicator, a male prostitute is what it means. Uh, 4205 can be used either for a female or for male. It says a whoremonger. Uh, it could be in the heart or it could be outside in the flesh. Uh, we have also covetous. Uh, covetous holding or desiring more that is eager for gain. Uh, a defrauder. Uh, also an extortioner. That's uh, someone that's like a ravening wolf who's ravening. 
uh, obtain money through force or threat, either through blackmail, unfair shakedown, uh, unfair shakedown. And so he's, he says, not altogether with the fornicators of this world, for then must ye needs go out of the world. So we have to be in communication with these individuals who are like this. They may be covetous, extortioners. Uh, they may be idolaters. One who sets up an image, a false image, a false Christ. We have to communicate with them, not fellowship with them in their works, but communicate with them business or whether it be uh, in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. But you can't partake of their deeds. You can't do what they do. Uh, verse 11 says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortion for such a one know, it says not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not you judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judges. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So there's a division that Jesus is making through the word of God concerning how we deal with the brethren that are faithful, how we deal with the brethren that are unfaithful, how we deal with the world. Amen. And so this, this mindset, saints, what lack I yet? What lack ye yet? You know, maybe uh, you are not committing any sin, but there is something else that you need. Uh, courage, more courage, more uh, study, more wisdom, more strength. And God gives this, according to the book of James, freely, liberally. He gives that liberally. And so, to make our calling and election sure, if we look at a, a chapter right next to it, he mentions a list again in verse 9, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. He says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators or, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. It says, Nor abuse of themselves with mankind. Now, the details of that concerning uh, effeminate, gay, catamite, soft, G3120, we have also abuse of themselves with mankind, is a, a sodomite. Uh, it's mentioned also in Deuteronomy 23, uh, verse 17. Uh, the Sodomites uh, and the Catamites, evil groups uh, mentioned in the scriptures. We still have them uh, today in the world. It says, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, uh, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And so, saints, this is a blessing because we've been separated from this world. The works that Satan has created, the world has flocked to it. You know, it's flocked to it. They enjoy it. They ravish in it. They love it. They bathe in it. That is their glory. It's a temporary glory. It's a shame, uh, actually. And it's a temporary thing, saints. It's not eternal. And so, the question he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. What must we do personally? Because we're going to be judged individually, each individually. It's not going to be a group uh, percentage. You, uh, As a church, we're not going to be judged. Will Clayton, 80% uh, of you are faithful, so you all come in. You know? It's not going to be like that. It's going to be judged individually, each. And so personally, saints, we have to recognize and look in the, in the mirror of the word and see what lack we yet. You know, what lack I yet? And ask Christ and God to guide us. What lack I yet? You know, and to fill in what lacks. Because Jesus wants to do that. He wants to fill in whatever we lack. Amen. He wants to fill. He wants our hearts to be open so we can be full. Because if we close it unto him, just like the young man went away sorrowful, he closed his heart. He, he, didn't, he didn't open it. He closed his heart and went away. And uh, many went away closed hearted in the time of Christ. I mean you have their hearts closed today. You know, they they don't want to talk. They don't want to hear you anymore. They don't want to hear God's word anymore. They would rather just not speak to you, not not pick up your calls, live their own life, let them make money. Just let me make money. Let me live my own version of the New Testament. Let me see my own version of Jesus Christ. See my own own version of the Father that I've created in my heart. That's idolatry. You created another Christ in your heart and you are thinking that he's walking hand in hand with you in agreement, but he's not. He's not in agreement with, with you because we don't find him saying what you just said. So you just create another image, uh, a, a false character. 
uh, just like uh, Disney World, you know, the, the mouse is not a real mouse. It's a make-believe mouse. It's a make-believe world. It's not a real. It's not a real world. It's not a, you know, it's for entertainment. However, it's not a, a real place that that you know that comes from uh, everyday life that we live in. It says, "You were washed, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of our God." We look at another uh, angle here. Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, where he mentions this war that happened, saints. And we, are, we can overcome this war uh, by the Spirit of our God as we live day by day. We ought to be wiser than, than uh, the works of Satan. Verse 16, Galatians 5, 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill, uh, it says, the lust of the flesh. Uh, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, led of the Spirit, saints, you listen to him. Listen to what he said in the Word. And through Matthew, all the way to Revelations, through Galatians, all the way to Revelations, you listen to how he speaks, how he thinks. And you're led by him. Not led by your anger, not you're led, led by your hatred, by your, your own fleshly desires it says Amen. the works of the flesh are manifest so they're open made known which are these adultery fornication and cleanness uh, lasciviousness uh, idolatry witchcraft which witchcraft is uh, dealing with med medicinal and also uh, with the witches that deal with the card readings you know I had a like I mentioned in a teenage class I had a, a, a witch that I talked to before I became a Christian uh, actually several witches uh, and one of them told me that some bad things were going to happen uh, to me and she was right you know after she uh, after she grabbed my hand and did, did something with it twirled her I don't know what she I, I don't remember the details but uh, she told me something was going to happen in the future that was bad and it did happen you know and it's, that's that example is actually in Acts 16 where the woman was uh, telling Paul, she was saying, "These are the servants of the Most High God. These are the servants of the Most High God." Now she had, uh, she was telling the truth, but she had an evil spirit in it, a demonic spirit that was in her. And, and actually, right after uh, she told me that, uh, you know, I got in trouble various times. And uh, what the, the thing about that is, there's an open door where Satan is seen, sitting in her, in this, in these witches. And these sorcerers and these uh, tarot card readers that we have today, and when the devil sees that you agree, that you believe it, that you're in fellowship with, uh, with the work that she just spoke, then he can come in into your life. And if you don't have Christ in you to protect you, she could come. The devil could come in and just ravish your life. You know, make plans. He, he's got plans too. He doesn't. The devil doesn't have plans for eternal life. He doesn't ask the question, "What must I do to have eternal life?" He doesn't question that. He, "What must I do to mess up?" Sister, sister ABC is mine, or sister Ham, brother Hamilton is mine, or brother Hamilton's like, what must I do to to knock them off this narrow road and break, put them off the, on the road, the wide road of destruction? That's his plans, and so that's what he plans for uh, as he uh, goes to and fro on the earth. And so you know that that witch, uh, she told the truth uh, in that point and concerning my life. And thank God I was baptized. You know, and uh, okay. sins removing. There's a seal. There's a separation uh, uh, that God does when you you've been born again. You become His child, where He protects you from the things, the arrows, and the plans that devil has for you. He, you know, the protection that we had before, uh, outside of Christ, we didn't have. It. You know, God extended life, but we didn't have that protection that we currently now have. It's, it's that's a blessing, saints, because the the world doesn't have that protection. You know. Um, you look at Jesus Christ, how he was raised in a in a bad neighborhood. However, God protected him as he went uh, to and fro. Uh, you know, they, they said, can anything good uh, come out of, uh, I believe it was Nazarene? I believe it was uh, Galilee, that's the one. Can anything good come out of Galilee? And uh, Jesus Christ, you know, he came out of Galilee. No sin, untouched by Satan's arrows, by Satan's works in Galilee. And uh, we look at where he went from. He was, they wanted, to, they wanted to kill him since he was born. 
He went to Egypt, to Bethlehem, Galilee. He was going to and from. I mean, his whole life from beginning to end was uh, was the devil constantly trying to attack him, and yet untouched uh, of sin. Just like when uh, Shamrai, Meshach, and Abednego, when they cast into the fire, you know, they were untouched by the fire uh, when they were in the presence uh, in the in the in the fire, because God said, no, no, no fire will touch you. And just same with Christ, same with us. Saints is is the devil won't touch us if we stay uh, obedient unto him. It says, variance of verse 20, emulations, uh, which is envy, malice, of, with a fervent mind, or uh, wrath, again, uh, with a fervent mind. Variance means wrangling, or you just wrangle, you wrestle, just uh, just to do, it. not to come to an end point or a conclusion or God's conclusion, uh, but you just want to wrangle. Uh, strife, uh, faction or contention, uh, sedition, which is a division. Now, Jesus said, that he came to, to bring a sword that divides. Divides mother from daughter-in-law, uh, father from son, but those that want to commit sin in the family and those who want to be righteous, that's how he's going to divide. But this type of sedition, division, is uh, with uh, heresy. Uh, it's with uh, their own intentions instead of God's will. And that's a different mindset when it says, um, when it says uh, sedition here. Uh, heresies, false teaching. Uh, we have envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, which is partying, clubs, uh, and such like of the tale of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, it says, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, but the fruit of the Spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, Moses sent out the men to find the fruit of the land. It was good when they came back with the branches. It's a goodly land. And so this church should be that way, with goodly land. It should be full of, it says, love, love, joy, peace. Not the peace that the world gives, but the peace that Christ gives. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. It says faith. And when, it, when the world sees uh, us saints, they should see us as Canaan's land. A, a land that's filled with milk and honey, spiritually full, where they can know that there's a place to rest that they can know you know when they come back one day in the future when the devils whooped them even though saints have left they recognize i remember that a land that i used to live in it's like the prodigal son i'm gonna go back to my land to the land where i came from and i'm gonna live there because i remember how good it was, it was at that time from the security that god had kept me under and the fruit that was there it was it was right it was good it came from heaven it was a uh, it says, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, when we want to close with Isaiah chapter 5, because uh, he sings a song, and this song uh, is mentioned in the Old Testament. Uh, I want to re read this song. Uh, Isaiah chapter 5, he says, I will sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it. This is what God does to us, saints. And he gathered out the stones there. He took out the stones out of our lives. He planted it with the choicest vine. And put a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth wild grapes. Wild grapes. And supposed to bring forth uh, good grapes. But it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could I, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. So he's asking the question, what should I do between me and my vineyard? What should I do to it? You know, that's the question. That's a heavy question, you know, and we should ask that question concerning consideration. Uh, what should God do to us? You know, should God keep us alive for living in sin, as after He washed us, living a double life? And now, verse five, go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it should be eaten up and break down the wall thereof. And it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor dig. 
but there shall come up briars and thorns. I'll also command the clouds that they rain or rain upon it. Look, this is what the vineyard is. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And they look for judgment, and behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. He searched for righteousness, but for behold, a cry. So the question is, do we have oppression or righteousness? Do we have judgment or oppression? Because this parallel, this compa comparison can be compared to the church today concerning God's people, God's leaders, God's children, and what God want to do to us is that he will remove the fence, the hedge, make it waste, make us waste, and no spiritual rain will fall down upon us if we bear wild grapes. And so saints, we have to take heed and to be thankful and recognize what he's done concerning taking out the stones, concerning building the tower, concerning fencing us around and abroad. We should continue to bear grapes and now wild grapes so that when God looks down from heaven, he sees a pleasant vineyard. A pleasant vineyard. And so that's the lesson saying just Ask that question, what lack I yet? Continue to carry your cross as you walk day by day. And just uh, continue to bear your whole armor that God has given you to overcome the wiles of the devil and to take down all his fiery, fiery arrows that he throws at you. And for those listening, understand that Christ came in the flesh and was prophesied of his coming. He came, he died. On the third day, he rose from the grave according to the scriptures. And that resurrection, after his resurrection, he told his disciples, go into all the world, go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believed and is baptized should be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. In Acts chapter 22, the men of Israel, they heard and they were pricked in the heart after Peter told them that Christ, God has made Christ both Lord and Christ. He have, God has made that same Jesus, both Lord and Christ, they were pricked in the heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And that's the question you should ask. What should you do to be saved today? And he gives his answer in the scriptures, not a hidden uh, from us on earth. He, a he answers their question. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, it's a promise. He doesn't say for the lie. He says for the promise. For the promise is unto you, unto your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now he says for the promise. But a lot of people say it's for the lie concerning baptism saves. The Catholics, Methodists, Presbyterians says that the teaching that we just read is a lie. But the scripture says that it's a promise Amen. to the children and to all that are far off. As many as our Lord God shall call, you will have your sins remitted. They'll be removed. All the sins created that you've done since birth, all the way until today. And He'll give you His Holy Spirit to guide you. He's also a reprover. He's also a comforter. And this Spirit we have with us today in the kingdom and the church. And you can receive that same Holy Spirit that will guide you and teach you all things that are, that are in this inspired book. Inspired by the apostles, inspired by the Holy Spirit unto the apostles, given to the apostles. In the Old Testament, the scripture says that the prophets, uh, they prophesied of this grace that should come. They wanted to see the grace that should come. However, Peter and to the apostles, it was revealed to them. And on the Holy Mount, as they, as they uh, preached, as uh, Jesus preached, as he, Jesus spoke to Moses. And the idea is that you can have that same a revealing of the Word of God today by His Spirit. The inspired Word can be revealed to you. Without that Holy Spirit, you cannot see or know what lack you yet. You cannot inherit the Kingdom of God without that guide. And you need that guide, and Christ is ready to give you that guide if you will obey His command. Repent, confess His name, and be baptized. You can call the number on the, on the, the YouTube 
uh, you can find us on Facebook anyway uh, and if you give us a call we'll guide you to wherever state you're at to a, a sound church of Christ in your area so you can have a Bible study and any questions that you have they'll answer them um, according to the scriptures if if you see or hear something contrary to what the Bible says or we can also have a study with you as well uh, so you can uh, be on faith the Bible says Romans uh, 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God so we don't want your faith to be in man-made teachings or anything man-made but unto what God has commanded and instructed and so this time we'll be closing uh, with the song and also with a prayer Amen. Softly. And in the heat, Jesus is calling. God bless. Calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Come home.